Hi, and welcome to the Library 2035 Imagining the Next Generation of Libraries webcast series. My name is Sandy Hirsch, and I'm the editor of this book. I'm pleased to host this web webcast series featuring several of the book's contributing authors who will share their vision for libraries over the next decade. Today, I welcome Nicole Cook, author of Chapter 10, Equity is a Necessary Foundation. Nicole Cook is Augusta Baker Endowed Chair and Professor at the University of South Carolina. Her research and teaching interests include human information behavior, critical cultural information literacy, and equity and social justice and librarianship. She is founding editor of ALA Editions Neil Schumann's Critical Cultural Information Studies series. Throughout Chapter 10, Nicole Cook addresses the significant need for libraries to be equitable, accessible, and representative of the communities they serve, and notes that libraries have a lot of work to do if they are to accomplish this by 2035. Librarians will need to act on behalf of others, be empathetic and understanding, and be willing to advocate for diverse programming services and resources that represent and meet the expectations of their community. So it's my great pleasure now to welcome Nicole Cook. Welcome. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. So I'd like to start our um, questions today by asking you to describe your vision for the future of libraries in 2035. Yeah, so in 2035, what I would love to see, and I do think we're on our way there, um, but what, what I would like to see is our library profession, professional workforce really match the communities that they serve. So, and I mean this in any library type, that the people working in libraries uh, should be part of the community, whether, and this is not to say that they should, you know, necessarily live in the community, but should be representative uh, and really understand the, the communities that they serve. And so I talk a lot about this, you know, in my research about developing cultural competence uh, and having some cultural humility and just really wanting to co-produce and collaborate on knowledge production with their communities. And so in order to do that, there are several things I think that need to happen, not the least of which is diversifying our profession. Um, I think we do a good job with recruiting. I don't think we do the best job with retention. And so we're losing a lot of really wonderful library professionals uh, that um, really represent the communities, you know, uh, that they would be serving. Um, and then, you know, for just writ large in the profession, just having people be more culturally competent and being, uh, as you mentioned uh, from my chapter, just being more empathetic uh, to the communities that they serve. Our communities are so diverse uh, and they change so rapidly. We're in uh, a particular point in time where there's just a lot of dissension and uh, just frankly, a lot of meanness, right? Um, and so how do we not only work with our populations and our communities in a way that they feel welcome, that they feel understood, um, but in a way that kind of allows our community members to kind of block out, you know, everything else that's happening in the world and they understand that their library is a safe and a brave space for them. Excellent. And as you're thinking about that future, what are you most concerned about? I'm concerned about a lot. Um, I'm concerned, you know, as a library educator, I'm concerned about uh, producing these empathetic library professionals. You know, that's something that uh, I think about every day. I'm concerned about what libraries present to the larger world, right? We're not always the best at promoting ourselves and talking about the really amazing and excellent things that we do every day. And so that can, of course, translate into funding and to support and, you know, not to uh, be political about it, but we're seeing uh, libraries being shut down and defunded uh, because the political atmosphere is seeping into what we do at libraries. Um, I've had to talk to my students about creating a safety plan. How do they keep themselves physically and mentally safe uh, when essentially the elements of the world and, and politics are coming in to the library and, and people have been attacked, um, whether inside the library or, you know, in the parking lots or, or something like that. We have librarians getting death threats and it's just, you know, not something that I ever thought would be an issue when I 
you know, went to library school. Um, so having to have these much harder conversations uh, is really necessary, um, whether librarians even need liability insurance, right, um, in terms of selecting the wrong book and angering someone in the community about, you know, what materials are there. So with that said, um, I haven't encountered it yet, thankfully, um, but I'm worried about our aspiring information professionals who will say, you know, this is not worth it. Um, people are being attacked and they're getting death threats and that's that's just not for me. So I'm afraid of what this type of long-term climate uh, will do to our libraries and our, our workforce. Um, yeah, th those are th those are the really uh, big things. Um, I, I will also mention uh, politically related that I think uh, can impact our workforce is I myself um, in a I'm in a red state. Um, I'm on a campus uh, where you know titles are being changed, and you know whether it's um, a person's title or whether it's a title of a course, and so this kind of suppression of free speech and intellectual freedom and academic freedom uh, is, is also a big concern to me as well. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, thinking about the flip side of that, what is it that excites you about the future? Yeah, I just, you know, and also so much excites me about it. Um, I have students, whether they are at the bachelor's level, whether they are at the master's level and PhD level, really just wanting to engage in research and, and solve some of our problems uh, in the profession and, you know, uh, at the societal level and just really uh, engaged and really uh, wanting to interact with communities and be innovative and have new programs and new initiatives. Um, and, you know, we used to tell students and we still do to an extent, um, you have to get outside your buildings, right? You have to do outreach out in the community. And so many people um, all over the country, all over the world are really um, taking that to heart and they're having pop up libraries. They're they're riding bikes through uh, neighborhoods. They're collaborating with uh, community partners and entrepreneurs um, really just to uh, make the library or, you know, the information center. Uh, the heart of the community. So I'm really um, excited to see that. And, you know, library schools across the country are still seeing steady growth and still seeing a lot of people enroll. And so it's always uh, heartening to see people wanting to uh, come into the profession. Thank you, Nicole. What do you think has had the biggest impact on libraries over the past decade? Uh, so the things that come to mind, um, one thing that comes in particular, because it's it's my area, um, is equity, diversity, and inclusion, um, and just really having bigger, more substantive conversations and thinking about what this means in a more contextual level, right? So it's easy to say, you know, that libraries should be equitable, um, but what does that really mean in practice? And what does it mean to have someone uh, be an equitable profession? And what does that per person have to do to prepare themselves internally, um, as well as internally in the organization to actually produce an equitable environment? And so, you know, with that conversation, um, with, you know, some of the pushback, um, I think to, at least to me, it's made the conversations uh, more interesting, um, not not less difficult, but definitely um, uh, more interesting. Um, and the second thing, and this is maybe in the last couple of years, uh, instead of the, the whole 10 years, um, is this uptick in censorship and trying to limit academic freedom. Um, and this is not to say that book banning and book challenges are new because they're, they are absolutely not. Um, but But just to see the level at which uh, we're dealing with these issues um, has been really surprising. And I think it's given giving us a chance to be transformative in this moment. And how do we continue to prepare um, our profession for these types of challenges? Thank you. And what do you think is going to have the biggest impact on libraries in the next decade? I think there's gonna be more of the same. Um, I think there's going to be um, a need for folks to be even better communicators, even uh, more empathetic, even more culturally competent, and even stronger advocates. Um, and I think advocates in ways that we had not thought um, of advocating before. 
um, like I mentioned earlier, advocating for our safety and advocating more, even more for the community, you know, uh, than we already do. Um, I, you know, related to the last answer, I think we're still going to be maybe uh, playing with this idea of equity versus equality and what that really means in practice and how do we, you know, achieve equity as opposed to just being satisfied uh, with equality. Um, and I think we'll see a lot more of what we're seeing in terms of libraries, not just being about books, right? We've got libraries with maker spaces and wood shops and uh, fiber studios and you, you name it, they have it. And this is on top of what they're already doing with helping people with taxes and um, job preparation and things of that nature. So I think we're going to have even more of an expansion and have people really uh, recognize the the additional things that we do for the community. Excellent. And I, you've submitted your chapter for the book a, a few months ago. I was wondering if anything, any of your thinking has changed since you wrote that chapter. No, uh, not really. Um, I will say, I think my thinking has uh, gotten even stronger and um, it's, I think, the things that I was writing about in the chapter have become even more important. Um, we're, you know, seeing just different things happening that we would not have expected. And I think we we need to be even more adamant uh, that our profession is prepared uh, to be empathetic. Um, I wrote uh, something else uh, about self-censorship and this idea that while we're going through this book banning uptick, you know, there's still a lot of censorship happening within our profession, within our libraries, people not selecting certain things because they personally don't like uh, the material or not engaging in certain things because they're afraid of, you know, being canceled or, you know, being uh, ostracized. And I really do firmly believe that we can't tell the community what we think that they should be doing if we're not doing that ourselves. Um, so to a certain extent, there's a little, uh, hypocrisy still happening for various reasons. Um, and so I do think that it's even more imperative that um, we make sure our own houses are, are straight uh, before we go out into the community and really be purposeful about uh, training and professional development and just really having the conversations that will enable us to be uh, as empathetic uh, and as compassionate as we want to be in 2035. Thank you. And I was wondering, do you have any advice for information professionals as they look toward the future? Uh, just keep learning. Um, you know, I know particularly during COVID, people really uh, reach their limit with webinars and, and different things. Um, but as we tell our students, you know, the library degree or the master's degree that they receive is really just the foundation. Um, the field changes so quickly, like now we're all doing the deep dive into uh, artificial intelligence and chat GBT and, and things of that nature. Um, and things are happening so fast. Um, so please be proactive in your professional development. Um, you know, there's so much available, right, uh, for free um, and, and other venues. Please take advantage of that. And I would um, also say don't be afraid of a particular topic. Um, you know, or a particular class, if you're still in school, uh, go ahead and take it because you don't know where the next amazing idea is going to come from. Yeah. And is there anything that you think that information information professionals can do to prepare for that future, for their desired future? Uh, so many things. Um, I mean, if we're just uh, being uh, kind of concrete about it, um, have as many experiences as you can take the internship, uh, see if you can cross train with another department or another institution um, and just, you know, kind of think outside the box. Um, and I know that that can be a little cliche, but again, thinking beyond uh, the four walls that we uh, typically reside in during the week, you know, who can you partner with? Um, you know, who can you uh, have a program with? Um, and just, just thinking as big as possible. And I think sometimes folks are maybe a little hesitant to think as big as they would like because someone will say no, someone will get upset. Just do it. Just ask anyway. Great. And what key competencies do you think that librarians are going to need to be able to thrive in 2035? Yeah, um, certainly, 
the cultural competence and cultural humility and just really working towards being empathetic. And I do talk about that as an ongoing cycle, right? It's not something that we achieve once and, you know, maintain forever. It's, it's continuous work. Uh, another thing I would say is flexibility. Um, we have to be much more flexible and uh, agile, not only in uh, my area of library education, but uh, in libraries where we're trying to consistently, you know, uh, adjust to changes in the community, changes in the profession. Um, you know, sometimes folks don't like change, but, you know, we are in a rapidly changing world and profession um, and just being more flexible and agile. Um, let's see. And just being more open um, and collaborative. And, you know, a lot of times folks like to work alone or, you know, they think that their position doesn't warrant collaboration. And I really think anything uh, could warrant collaboration. And I guess I would also just say, uh, be fearless um, in asking for help, asking for support, having those hard conversations and just, um, you know, launching that next innovation. Thank you. I have one last question for you. And that is, uh, I'd love for you to define your view of the future of libraries in six words or less. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> I'm counting on my fingers. <laughs> libraries are the center of the community. I no, like that. that. That might be seven. <laughs> You know what? It's it's fine. <laughs> that's great. Those yeah. are small words in there. Yeah. So that's okay. fine. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Nicole Cook, uh, for joining me today for and for your contribution to the book Library 2035, Imagining the Next Generation of Libraries. It's been a real pleasure to talk with you today, and I've enjoyed hearing more about your vision for the future of libraries. So thank you so much. Thank you. This has been an amazing opportunity. And thank you for attending this webcast with Nicole A. Cook, author of Chapter 10, Equity is a Nece Necessary Foundation. To view additional author webcasts from this Library 2035 webcast series, please visit the link or use the QR code on your screen. And thank you again for attending.